Hey, I'm Kerwin Frost, and on this super special episode of Kerwin Talks, we have an icon who paved the way for everyone. He took all the stones. He's a legend. Uh, Jeremy Scott. <laughs> Thank you for that great introduction. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I just kind of speechless. Aww. And uh, so, so, so humble that, that you've allowed me in your home to, to shoot this. Um, you're, you're from Kansas, Missouri, right? Kansas City, Missouri. So, um, I kind of want to take it back to like the, the first days of like, cause I've read that, that you, um, that you, you, when, when you did your first show before that you were kind of like couch surfing and, yep. and yeah, just walking through I was that. homeless. Well, okay, I grew up in Kansas City. Well, I was born in Kansas City. Grew up on a farm outside of Kansas City, about an hour away. Came back to Kansas City for junior high and high school. Wow. And then I went to New York and got into NYU for um, art history, but then transferred when I was there. I started a summer session, and then I transferred to Pratt. I went to Pratt and did an interview. What made you transfer? Because I wanted, then I was like, I'm going to go study fashion design. Mm. And I went to New York thinking, I'll go to NYU, I love art history, I'll, I got accepted, I thought this is great, it's a ticket to New York out of Kansas City, yeah. but still fashion was my dream and I had been denied um, by FIT, which I kind of thought was the authority as far as my Midwestern eyes and mentality was. Right. They sent me a, um, a rejection letter um, that said I lacked originality, creativity, and artistic ability. Insane. And I was and, crushed. Which at the moment, like, even when you got, yeah, you got told something like that, it's kind of like the end of the world. It's uh, like, yeah, I was really like the, the yeah. Wizard of Oz telling you like, you know. You're not shit. Yeah, and yeah. so I was, I was so devastated, I kind of thought, okay, well maybe I think I'm really good, but I'm just good in Kansas City. Yeah. And you know, you don't know the real world, so right. maybe you should put those dreams away and just, you know, oh forget about this. and. You know, yes, you do art and you love art, and I'd always done art all through since I was like br living and breathing basically. I mean, I used to dig up clay out of the earth on the farm, make ceramics. Wow. And, you know, I would do anything and everything, especially I love doing things with my hands. And so I thought, okay, fine, I'll, this art history, this is interesting, we'll start this. And I did that summer session, fell in love with New York, realized I was in the right place for me, right. and did an interview at Parsons, and then one at Pratt, and then Pratt just spoke to me, and they really understood me, and they wow. understood my ideas and my sketches, and they yeah. were kind of like, oh, we'd love to have you, and wow. you know, so then, and then I just switched my whole thinking and got myself on track to be at Pratt and went to school there. How long, how long being in school uh, was it till you had your first show? So I did my four year program in three years because I had already taken so much college courses while I was in high school because wow. I knew I wanted to get the F out of Kansas City. Yeah. So I was taking night courses, uh, I was studying Japanese at night at, another, at a college, taking French college courses everything I could that was a college course so that I could just have, you know, so I had a lot of liberal arts when I got there. So yeah. I started as a freshman first semester, then I was a freshman sophomore by second semester. So I was always kind of straddling. So I left and then moved to Paris three months after I graduated. Wait, what? I moved to Paris three months after I graduated from Pratt. How'd that happen? <laughs> like, how'd you have the money or like, you know what I mean? I had an internship um, at the press office from Moschino right. that I had in college, and so I got them to hire me because I was what, like, What's their name, the, the press office? They were called Moda, and now they're called IFA, and so it was Michelle Stein who was the president, and she still is, okay. and so she, I was just was like, look, I've been doing such a good job here, yeah. you know, can you pay me something, because right. I need to, buy yeah, a ticket to Sorry. like, you yeah. know, to leave. And I'd been already there for several months. And so she said, okay, yeah, we'll, you know, hire you for the rest of the summer. And so I took the money that I earned from her, from that job and bought Saved my ticket. Up. Yeah, and I had a place to stay for the first week because there had been a foreign exchange student from Paris who was interning there also. Right. And he had an apartment that was, um, 
ended, like he'd already moved out, but he still had paid. So there was like a week when I landed that I could stay there and have a place to live. Yeah. So I had a place to live for the first week, and then I started, then I was homeless. And then I was couch surfing oh. all over Paris for the rest of another how does that months. work? Because did you you didn't really speak their language, right? You didn't. I spoke French because I had studied it. Oh, wow. But I hadn't lived there, and that's a whole other way of. Yeah. And then I really learned the language by being hungry or right, being right, lost right. or being confused. But or, I feel like being homeless in New York is like way easier than being homeless in a place like Paris, where it's kind of like not stuck up but just like you know what I mean I have to say people in France were so nice to me wow. and people were so like you know barely knew me met me at a club and were like yeah you can stay on my couch for like you know this week I'm you know out of town or I have a place to stay right, you know? right. so people were always super generous actually and and so so you were living in Paris and then back to the first collection how how'd that come about so then I went to Paris hoping to get an internship. That was my goal, just to work with people that I admired and be around the things that I loved. I didn't think I was going there to start a career yeah. in that way. I thought I was just going to work for people and learn and just give back to the things that made me happy. Right. Um, there was so much red tape that I couldn't ever get past, especially there was one whole obstacle where, like here in America, a lot of kids on college or on their parents' inter, um, insurance, insurance until they're like 25 or something like that. Right. So we don't have college generally insurance. Well, right. they do in Europe, and they wouldn't allow you to intern without having proof of insurance wow. yourself. But I was like, but I'm on my parents' insurance, right, and right. that's kind of okay in America. So there was always like something. Yeah. And then at one point, finally, I was like sleeping on the floor of this. Of back actually, that French intern. I was now at his new apartment, sleeping on the floor. And he was just like, if you're so good, then why don't you just do it yourself? Wow. And I thought, fuck you, I will. Yeah. And then I just immediately started like, okay, I'm gonna have a show and this is how I'm gonna do it. Cause I'd done all my student shows and I had made the pattern, sewn the clothes, you know, done, produced the show. Right. So I was like, I can do this. You can do it, yeah. And from meeting people in Paris and being out and especially being out at nightclubs and all this stuff, there was so many different people I met. So right. I had a friend that was like a party promoter and he was like, hey, I you know, know all these venues and if you want to have a venue for free, wow. I'm sure that like this bar, or this restaurant, or this place. So I went and looked at some of these things and found one that I was like, oh, this could look right for the vibe. And yeah. One of my friends was studying like uh, art and she had all these neon lights from installations she was doing. She's like, I can lend you all my lights and we can light it. Wow. I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then all I had friends that I thought looked amazing. I was like, you could model in you it. Can model. And, and then like, one friend was like, oh, I'm a photographer. I can ask some agencies. Wow. And so it just all it just all kind of came together and I I did the first show and it just kind of happened and then it was televised on French television. So it kind of catapulted way bigger than you thought that. it would be. Yeah. I was just trying to express myself because ultimately that's what fashion's been for me as a way to express my myself and to communicate with people. Yeah. And so that was such a huge like release for me to be able to have the show and to put a message out there and, yeah. and create on other people because I'd only been just creating basically on myself. Right. Up until that point. And 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 then I think after that you had the gold show? So that my gold show is the fourth show. It was the fourth show? Yeah. So that was there's was this one, then there was one that was all black after that. Wow. Then there was all white, which is a lot of people think is the first show. Yeah. Where I discovered Devin and Devin opened the show and that was her first show. Right. At thirteen. And so then from the white show, which lots of people loved in the fashion. Yeah. And that was the one that became more so the first show, people in France knew who I was. Yeah. The second show, there was a bigger brouhaha, and with that show, I won this award in France. It was called the Venus de la Mode, and it mm -hmm. was for the best new designer. Never gone to a, an American, nor f probably anyone foreign, but for sure not an American designer. Yeah. Um, and so it was a really big deal. So then there was more. Heat, More yes. So then by the time of the third show, then the Americans kind of, I mean, you have to understand, this is before, like, internet, Instagram. Right, life. right. So 
news traveled not as fast as it does now. <laughs> it took and a couple. So, yeah, it took a, a couple seasons. So then they all showed up to see about this boy wonder that they're all hearing about in Paris. Right. And it was all white show, which I think a lot of people loved because also white is very ethereal yeah. as a color. And I don't think they realized how weird I was yeah. because the white kind of Made it all yeah, elegant, made it, yes. and they're like. So then I did the gold show, which I was already planning on doing and had already been designing, and it was right. already in my head. Yeah. Then it was in a continuation of where I felt, and that one freaked a lot of people out. Yeah. Because I think, well, at that time, that's also hard to understand now. Gold yeah, it, was seen as so ostentatious and vulgar. Yeah. In, in the middle of minimalism's height, you know, and here I am doing these gold leather and these shapes that are asymmetrical and one high heel and one lower heel and right. all this thing of even the, the face being painted one side all made up and then one side actually kind of being made soft made down, and yeah. down so it was all about these two extremes yeah. and it was two and extreme the for people of that. Yeah. and it was like and you know it was like here is this kid with no eyebrows and a mullet and full gold front fangs with wow. my name on it from a farm yeah. in the middle of Paris having some weird avant garde. It was just too many weird things, I think, when people were like, especially the Americans were like, whoa. Yeah. Where the Europeans were already more receptive to it and like, oh, okay. So I did definitely got a backlash because people weren't ready for it. Which is crazy. Yeah. And I know it's like some of the like, the most disgusting shit they could say they said it like during that time. Of course. And it was because even you couldn't even explain it to them because they didn't even want to understand it. And still to this day, I feel like that's such a, a big thing. And, and, and it's why I say like you took the stones was because like no matter, no matter how much they try to like label it or box it or like, oh yeah, well that fits in that box. It's like you always broke out of it and still stood true and, and until, until even now. And it's like so inspiring to see that. Thank you. But yeah, it, it, it's, I, I kind of go through the same thing where, you know, people will see me cause, um, I've done like funny videos and, and I, I, I'm just like a person with humor. So it's like, uh, people kind of just always expect that from me and I, I can DJ and, and host and throw a film festival and, you know, they still like would rather just say, well, what is it? You know what I mean? And I feel like you're kind of one of the, one of those people who like really pioneered that for, uh, uh, for me. And, and the, the reason why I could do something like that is just cause how much you tuck and still, uh, sit strong. And they couldn't take it away from you. And yeah, that's Thank something you. I always think about 100%. I think also when you use humor, a lot of people have a hard time with it. Like yeah. people obviously love humor, yeah. but especially in fashion, it yeah. gets people confused. They're like, are you making fun of us? Are you right. not taking it seriously? Are you not taking it serious? It's like, well, I'm using humor, but I'm very passionate about what I'm doing. I'm dead serious yeah, about it what doesn't, I'm doing. It doesn't change yes. the seriousness of what you do. And I've had, people do that to me where it's like, oh, well, you know, uh, you know, I, I'll go to fashion week and completely just make a scene in Paris. And it, it, it just like completely gets taken. Not, not the wrong way. Cause people kind of like respect that now, but like, yeah, people have said to me like, are you, is it a joke? Like, are yeah. you joking? You know, when you wear like this gray suit with these huge angel wings, uh, to the Dior show or like, yeah, 100%. And, but those are the people who never even try to, under, or will never understand it, are the people who have to question it that hard, I feel like. So, going from that show, how'd you take that? From the gold show. Yeah, from it the gold show. It was devastating. Yeah. I mean, there was people who were like my, you know, like I looked up to as like industry heavyweights yeah. yeah who i thought were amazing and who had also just been like singing all my praises now saying that on tv like i should never design again it was outrageous i should you know wow. quit i should you know like i mean all this stuff and people turning their back yeah. you know it, it was a weird dichotomy though because all the cool young stylists and the cool photographers all loved the collection and it was photographed and used and it was like in all the coolest magazines yeah. and all the best editorial and all that stuff 
ended up happening and coming out, but the negativity of people acting like I was a fluke uh, yeah. or you know a fraud or, yeah. or all these things because they didn't understand it or didn't appreciate it. Right. Was it was it was it was hard. Yeah. It was very isolating, but it gave me such thick skin to be able to go forward and just not give a fuck, because honestly, I I, I saw I saw people become very two faced. Right, frankly, right. you know, and it yeah. was like, and I saw who stood by me the and who colors. believed and all those things and yeah, it was. It happened so early in my career, and it's such a, a in a way, a fragile time yeah. because I was still like getting my footing. And yeah, you were still learning. Yeah, your and, pattern. And so, you know, I mean, but that's the thing is, like at this point, I've been like up and down as far as people's opinions in different ways, been yeah. in and out, all these things. So now it doesn't really matter. Just fuck I do my thing. Yeah, I do it well. No one can be. No one's in my lane because I do something singularly. Yeah. That's not of. It's not about you. Yeah, this so is it's, my. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm very confident in that, and I just kind of do the things I love and try to be, you know, with all my heart and put that into my work and yeah. share that with people yeah. in the most heartfelt and humble way and hope that people can enjoy it. Yeah. And you know, if it's not right for them, it's not right for them. It's That's right fine. For them, yeah. I'm not trying to be everyone's designer. Exactly. But you are the people's designer. But I am the people's designer. <laughs> <laughs> um, around that time, uh, I, I know you, I think a couple years after that, you, you did costume designing for Bjork. Could, could you tell me about that? Because that yeah. I found and I was like, whoa. She And she kind of wore one of the original wing dresses. Yeah, she called me after the white show and she said, that she was going on tour and that one of my dresses had inspired her and she thought it was the perfect thing for her to wear on tour, which was amazing because she was the first concert I ever saw with the Sugar Cubes wow. when I was like 16 in Kansas yeah. City and went to Lollapalooza to see her because I was so... Like, was it more about her, her or the Sugar Cubes? It was always about her. You know, I didn't like her in the... In the I loved her in the Sugar Cubes, but I feel like her husband kind of tried to... He, he really tried to out-weird her sometimes. Yeah. And they're like, all right, we got it. You know, yeah. you're going to do the weird voice like her? She was the you're star. Not yeah. She's like unlike anything else. And Crazy. So, so I made that for her, and we became great friends. And then I started addressing her, and she wore lots of pieces from the gold show. And she, there's also a picture where she came to me, as, uh, came with me as my date for the Cinderella ball in, yeah. in Florence, I think is where it was. Is that with the gold the mask? Gold, yes, the yeah. gold mask. There, so it's a white dress and a gold leather piece and the gold mask. Wow. Um, and I love her still to this day, and she's still an amazing, inspiring woman and creature and artist. I saw this one photo of a uh, of you and 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 and, and uh, 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 Pablo and uh, these these the golden gold puffer puffers. Jackets. Yeah, Tell me about pop -pop. that. Yeah, that was so funny. We were out in London, and she. Um, I mean, the other thing is like now also for kids, they don't really think about her. Uh, she was before Lady Gaga, yeah, before all this yeah. stuff. She was like the pop star that wore things that were out of this world. Yeah, so, she never cared either. Yeah, and she was like, it was like paparazzi crazy. Yeah. Um, so we were leaving a place in London. I was always, when I went to London, I always stayed at her house with her. And Pablo and I had matching gold puffer jackets from Delancey Street that <laughs> he had found when Delancey Street used to be Delancey Street right, right. back in the days that you all remember because you're <laughs> from the OG time. Yeah. And we had gotten them triple extra large, like giant wow. ones. And then the paparazzi <laughs> said we were her bodyguards because <laughs> um, they just were like, couldn't imagine that they thought she had two gold bodyguards. So yeah. And then you also worked with Madonna around that time too? So then Madonna... And this is crazy. These are yeah. like your idols, essentially. And Madonna now, like, was the second show I ever saw during, live. During the time where everyone is turning their back on you, <laughs> you have the world's biggest icons, but, you know, your icons, the people that make yes. you feel safe and, yeah. and, and your true self, like, supporting you. And, yeah, yeah, what's that feeling? And also, tell me about Madonna. Yeah, yeah just... That wow. was amazing also because she was the second concert I ever saw live. So the Crazy. first two people I addressed were also the first two people that I 
bought tickets. Well, actually, Madonna's, I won tickets. It was yeah. Madison Square Garden, and I won tickets to, to go see her. You won tickets? Yeah. What, on the radio? On the radio, because in college, there was this really giant, um, it was a drag queen named Bobo, and he was, but he was like physically giant, and yeah. I dressed him, there was a contest to do a Madonna lookalike, so I dressed him like Madonna, but he was <laughs> like in, you know, club kid platform, right. um, uh, motocross boots and this whole thing, but we did this whole course of this whole thing, and Bobo won. So Bobo brought me because I wow. did, you know, his costume for it, and yeah. so we went and saw Madonna in the Girly Show, Madison Square Garden. So that was the second live show I ever saw, wow. and she was the second um, performer after Bjork that I ever dressed. Insane. And um, I had been working with her consistently, and love and adore her, and admire her, and she to me is like the American dream yeah. of like you born with nothing, you have a dream, yeah. you believe in it, you work hard, you fight for it, you yeah. strive for it, and you can you know, make it happen. So That's I've always fact. thought of myself as coming from the land of Madonna. Wow. You know? And did, did you stay, did you stay in, 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 in Paris after that? I was in Paris, I moved, I moved here to LA in 2002, February 2002. So wow. I started in Paris, I lived six and a half years there, started my career there. And then I moved, um, I moved here, yeah. Um, I saw there was like, a, you did, so you did fall 2003, and then like there was just this huge gap, and then you came back in, in 2010, what happened there? That's just, you, you, all you see is the gap is I was off of. Um, the runway? No, oh. I was just off of, it was at that time style.com. Oh. So. There, there was, go. I was, I was blacklisted. Mm. That's what happens when you're a rebel. Yeah. So wow. yeah, you gotta use the other search engines to find all the other collections. Yeah, yeah, ask, ask Jeeves. Exactly. <laughs> what happened? What happened, I'll never really know, but yeah. I mean, I had a show um, with Jeffrey Deitch, a Deitch Gallery in New York, Yeah. Um, called Sexhibition. Yeah. And it was a peep show where there was different models in peep booths acting out different scenarios wow. and different looks. And there was Is there any footage stupid. of this? There's a book that I photographed. I don't know if there's video because I can't think of that off the top of my head. Because it was definitely a show you had to experience live. Right, right. There was it a way was, you could feel it. Yeah, because it wasn't like a procession. Right. And. Um, and some people at that time at style.com, I think, deemed it not to be fashion. Right. Oh, and I was God. like, well, this is, yeah, it's a performance art fashion show. It's like, a, it's, a, it's a, that's the way I'm showing it. I'm not showing it like one model. Blah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. So, and that's what it's about. And then there was a, a little tit for tat back and forth. And then that show disappeared off of the website, wow. and then um, I wasn't covered on the website for many years. That's crazy. Yeah. But I've had a show every season, of course. That's a fact. Yes. Dang. But you know, that's the thing. Part of those things are those things that I look at it this way. In my career, I've built my career yeah. on my own two feet. Yeah. Built my fan base on my own two feet. I've done everything being genuine and yeah. honest and pure to my beliefs and what my integrity built my business from that. You've essentially sacrificed your entire life to this cause. Absolutely. It's really, really insane how much you had to go through. And, and it it's kind of pisses me off. People don't really think about. Yeah, no, yeah. no. Because even throughout that, you still, you still shine. Thank you. And you don't make it about that. And I, I think that's really incredible too. Around that time, from what I could find, because I, there was not much we could find, but around that time you started uh, the, the infamous Adidas collaboration. Correct. And I, I want to know as much about that as sure. possible and how that happened <laughs> and because it started so early and yeah. then I found Addy Color through that research. Yeah, you have that track. I mean, I was yeah. amazed that you got that. That's a hard one to have. Yeah. So this, the tracksuit you have, the Keith Haring, the, oh, yeah. the Keith Haring tracksuit was the first thing. So. I was wearing Adidas things. Wait, so the key pairing was the first? It's, yeah, that's the first piece that I did as a design with Adidas that was produced. So that's prior to oh. my collaboration. So it was under the Addy Color umbrella. That's what I thought, you see, because I saw there were so many artists 
you yes. got like paired with someone yes and you obviously blew everyone out the water <laughs> with you. yours and that's what happened is mine was so special and got so much attention yeah. they were like, <laughs> they're like hey would you want to do something again but maybe like continuous right and i said i would love to i just don't want to do another one off i yeah. want i want like let, give me a give me a chance to bring this up yeah. and so and give me my own yeah so originally it was supposed to be i think three seasons only the contract was but um it went when it happened it just became an instant I, like the wing shoe became well, an slow icon. down all right <laughs> let's not get there yet what what came after the keep hearing uh tracksuit the the next thing that was produced <laughs> yeah i think was was the first collection um the first season of my collection with adidas which i feel like they had another name that they wanted to call it at that time oh, originals by originals mm. it was it was still another umbrella but it became but still it was like jeremy scott for adidas right right but everyone just called it jeremy scott for adidas right. from the get-go yeah because the sweets new and they're just like yeah no that's what this is yes. like don't try to make it this yes but i saw this one sneaker and it was like a canvas shoe with the brown jeremy scott logo okay sorry yeah thank you for reminding me so yeah. that's actually reverse that's before the the that's before keep hearing well, there's two things. Okay. So, okay. Now I remember. I'm sorry. There's a lot of history. Yeah. So the very, very first thing when I moved here, someone from the PR said, oh my God, I'm so glad you're in America. You're in my PR territory now. I've always loved you in Paris, yeah. but you weren't my territory and I have right. a project I'd love to do. Territory. And yeah. so, yes, exactly. In this <laughs> modern age, territory. <laughs> so they're like, we're doing this project. I forgot what that one's called. Maybe that one was called also original. Player. I'm not sure. Yeah. But they're like, you're gonna we're gonna do a hundred shoes right and it was 50 them. for you 50 for them correct and you'll do them as you want so i but you had to kind of basically they were handmade in the original factory in germany but you at the same time there was a deadline and it was crazy so i had the idea for the wing shoe but couldn't do it because they couldn't wow. manufacture it and so i had to do something kind of with basically fabric. So I said, let's try two different things so I can see and then go. So yeah. I had my money print jacquard, yeah. and then I had my brown and beige logo jacquard. Right. So I sent them both, and we did some samples. Then we decided, well, I was like, I wanna go with the all money. So there were then these brown and, <laughs> there's these kind of orphaned logo <laughs> jacquard ones. <laughs> but then the whole thing became this, so there was 100 of the original money shoes. Right that were made and that also went bonkers for them and then the addy color thing happened after that wow with keith herring who has and the 50 pairs i actually have only my your one, one pair one pair at one point i mean they were going for ridiculous amounts of money right because they sold a few to some stores are these the brown ones or the money print the money ones okay, the brown okay, okay. ones i think i retained all of those okay and then i eventually within the collection redid the money but as the 2.0 yeah, wings right. to like nod back to it but still not take anything away from the original oh. ones and then i did a brown a, f a, f a correct brown jacquard one that yeah. was done so i kind of nodded back to them but yes that was each little project i did and then in between it like there was a show that was a movie premiere show i did yeah. i did custom shoes just for that show that were not produced wow that were all of different fabrics and then i i hit a high heel mule in them before there was these mule shoes that happened uh, and came and gone now but like right, right, so right. then the girls would have this, Damn. this the kind of you know attitude that wow. they were in a high heel but the look of this big was big over puffy sneaker that's crazy evening gowns like they were going to a hollywood premiere which was the premiere to a, a short film i did yeah so what was the short film it's called Starring. It's on, um, you can see it on um, YouTube. It's a, like a, a spoof of a soap opera. Wow. Starring Tori Spelling, Asia Argento, uh, China Chow, Lisa Marie. Yeah. Some friends. So we did this, and I wanted to do like a movie premiere, like you're coming down the red carpet, and yeah. the whole, that was at the beginning of this kind of like, who are you wearing kind right, of right, phenomenon. Right, right, who are you wearing? So yeah. I was the person being like, who are you wearing? <laughs> yeah. And talking about what they're wearing, and then after this 
procession of the models and actresses from the film doing the red carpet, then I showed the short film that's like a 15 minute film. Because this was like right after sex exhibition, and I was right. I wanted to get out of just the normal runway. Yeah. And people weren't really ready for it, and that's why also the whole coverage got a little wackadoodle because people were like, "What is he doing?" Like. But you know what's amazing about it was that happening, kind of made you go to the streets. Yeah. And it made you like get get the kids back, and it was like you know what. I got my thing here. I, fuck that. Yeah. And like, you're gonna get it, and that's when I'm gonna come. Like, but it, it played out so perfectly at the same time. <laughs> what was uh, what was the energy in 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 L. A. when you dropped the the first shoe? And because now you have all this Adidas clout, yeah. Which is like, yeah. I mean, the first shoe was gangbusters. You have to remember, this is before Yoji started Y3. Wow. By a f maybe a year or a few months, I forget the exact time frame, but so this idea of like, I don't know, like high fashion and sportswear, especially streetwear. Yeah, it didn't there really, was no tie-in match. It didn't really exist. No. You know, and people like also like now this whole idea of like, well, of course everyone has like sportswear, all high fashion brands do and all yeah. high fashion brands have sneakers and all this stuff. Yeah. It was a very, separate world right but i was wearing those things because that's how i organically dress so right. i was really excited like to be able to play with those things and, and do mix things. them in yeah it, it made logical sense to me yeah. i was always wearing high tops so yeah. i was like why wouldn't i want to make my own yeah you know that's true so it was really exciting but it was also there wasn't really like a a, a kind of a you full know, circle to it yet yeah wow when you because yeah, you said you you had the idea for the wings already. Um, like, when that came to you, was it just like, like just boom or like, yeah, because that's insane. And I feel like that sneaker is like so important in history and completely changed how sneakers should look forever. Like, yeah. that's kind of, yeah, it, it changed the complete like ball game of it. Yeah, what, what was the thought when, when you came up with that? Much like your shoes today, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to create a volume and that drew your eye to it. And I was trying to think, how can I bring your eye but not change the actual length? Right. Like, like in a sense, let's say clown shoes. Like, yeah. I loved like, okay, how could I, like, I mean, you see a clown in the proportions and it's like, boom, you look yeah. at the shoes. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, how could I do that but still make this all wearable? Right. And how can I do this in a manufacturing system that maybe is very closed, let's say, narrow-minded? Yeah. And so I was like, okay, if I lace on this kind of shape, Wow. I can bring the eye, but it changes nothing about the walking. It doesn't impede yeah, right. your abilities to do anything. Yeah. And so that's what the original idea was. And then from there, after, then I got more bold. And I was like, oh, here's wings sprouting from it. And then right. here's a teddy bear head well, sprouting hold, from it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> when, when you finally got to do it, the, the first time, when you, when you first got to make them, um, what were they saying in the offices? I mean, I know how yeah. just like hard it can be from from the inside yes. of like the corporate office and like, yeah, because I, yeah. What? At that time there was two presidents of Adidas. Yeah. One was for uh, originals and one was for performance. Mm -hmm. And I was in Portland working on it um, and I was um, having uh, a, a drink outside, uh, it was a nice day outside at the hotel yeah. with the one from Originals, which was the domain I was under more. Yeah. And the one from Performance came and sat down and he said to the one from Originals, said to the other one, did you see, have you seen Jeremy's shoe? And he was laughing about it. He's like, oh my God, I mean, but a wing, like a wing shoe, like what's <laughs> gonna happen with this? And I just looked at him and said, it's gonna be an icon, yeah. watch. Yeah. And I was like, had no patience for it. And then it became an icon. Yeah, yeah it changed the fucking game. It became an icon game. for the brand. It's on the wall and the history on their, yeah, their walls course. and all the headquarters. They and laughed at you. They laughed at me and they didn't <laughs> believe. The president from Originals, he believed though. So that yeah. was good. So, so waiting on the apology. But um, uh, when um, from there it was over, it was game over. Yeah. And the reception was insane. Did it immediately just pop? 
I feel like it immediately popped. People, it resonated, and then it just took it a second for then the product from like going to the people and getting on the people to yeah. just becoming bananas. When um, when you did like the teddy bears or the bones, I mean, was it just like no questions asked after the wings? Was it just like I always had carte blanche? Wow. And. The bears, honestly, was just like, I wanted them so badly myself. And I thought, yeah. okay, these aren't going to probably sell that much. Right, right. But I have to have them. Yeah. I love them. This would make me so happy. How yeah. cute would this be? Of course. And then that became the best-selling shoe of originals Adidas that year. The bear. Yeah, the bear. Wow. The original bears. And then... After that, they were like, could you make more additions? And I was like, yeah. oh, do you want me to make more? <laughs> you actually requesting? They're like, yeah. So then I kept hitting as being the most, the highest performing shoe in originals. Wow. Sometimes having more than one, because like a wing would be up there, the bears, the pink poodles. Even. Yeah, the poodles are crazy. Yeah. Wow. And then I got crazy where I was like, okay, my bears have to have accessories, so the bear yeah. had the hat. The, hat. the, the poodles had the, the wing glasses. Yes, on the poodles. So yeah. yeah. Um, accessories having accessories I thought was like the new frontier who were who were the first celebrities to embrace the shoes Kanye yeah he had a pair of the original uh, gold wings very very first um, he's the one I think of as the, at the at literally talking the very first collection he's the one I think of as the most Wow. then from there as it grew it spans a lot of different careers right obviously like little Wayne was the first pair of shoes he wore out of gel were the bears. Yeah, the bears. They were like, can we have them for him to wear literally out of gel? I was like, okay, it's so great. We know that my good friend Rocky. Talk to me about that one, because that was the ultimate tie-in. Uh, I come from the projects in Harlem. Yeah. I saw that and it was like a whirlwind when you guys just like meshed. Yeah. It was so cool. And yeah, how, how'd, you meet, how'd you meet Rocky? Or how did he meet you? Rocky, um, Rocky was a big fan, yeah. and he was starting to get you know notoriety, yeah. and he kept asking to do things with me. But I didn't really know him at all. Right, and right, right. It was like I was like, oh, that's that's sweet. I was like, but you know what? I honestly was like, I don't think he'll probably like me when he meets me. And I thought there was all this other kind of stuff. Yeah. And I was like, you know. It's fine. I get it. Like, like the clothes, love right, it. Right. But he kept wanting to do something with me and do something with me, and there kept being things. And then finally, it was the magazine cover. Oh, which magazine? I can't think of the name now. Complex. Complex. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Where I just bought that on eBay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember it was Thanksgiving when a time when we shot it here, and. All the PR, all my PR, the PR at Adidas, the yeah. PR, all my PRs were like, look, do it with Nicki Minaj, do it with someone else, you can do it with anybody you want. Right. And I was like, okay, look, this kid obviously has something passionate that I represent for him. Yeah. It's not gonna kill me. Let me go do this photo shoot with this kid. Right, right, Who right. cares? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. It's my afternoon. I'm fine to give it to this kid. Yeah. Let me just do this. So I agreed and did it and went to the studio. And that was the first time you guys met? Yeah, we met at the studio. Wow. And he was just completely lovely as he is. <laughs> yeah. Completely just his nice kind of zen self and right. was so sweet and passionate and wow. then really became my brother. Wow. And was, that was the New York in him that, that, yeah. that made him not give up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, no, no, I got, I got to get to you. Yeah. And that's that's really cool. And then he in the it's I I used at that time the analogy to them because the same thing had happened with Katie originally. She was a fan who loved me, wanted to wear a dress, kept trying yeah. to ask for things, and you know it was like I kissed a girl was starting to come out and getting some radio play, but people you know everyone's so protective and yeah. and finally it was like her record release and they were like she really wants this dress. I was like you know what, give her the dress, let her borrow it. Yeah. Yeah. She uh, again. It was like she obviously it means something yeah. to her. What skin is it off my back? Yeah. I'm sure they'll be respectful for it. Yeah. And not like great. It was a one of a kind dress, but like wow. you know where I said it's at Capitol Records. I'm here in Hollywood. Yeah, I'll go that's right. Watch the the show. Block, yeah. Like you know, let this girl have her moment. Yeah. And that's also how her and I met and became friends. Yeah. And um, and her career amazingly did really well yeah. as well. So I I. 
I try to think about those things and think about the people that are passionate about yeah. things or about me or something like well, that. Well, it's the same thing with me. I think yes. in the past month, I've probably have bought like ten thousand dollars in like in your archives <laughs> <laughs> and just like like literally like because once you get one piece it's it's like people when they become obsessed with kind of like tattoos yes and you're just like well wait hold on and i'm so obsessed with just history in general and and yeah for me i wasn't able to afford it at that time yeah so now it's like oh wait now i can and completely like just go bonkers yeah. with it and like still deserves that homage and thank you did you did you get to meet uh asap yams yes you did how's that i mean i met him once so it was like wow a, you know just brief i think it was on a uh a, a set i think they were filming a video here I've, if i'm if i get all my facts right i feel like it was also a video um it was downtown l.a it was brief. I, I, I think Rocky was also filming something in the trailer, maybe a documentary. Yeah. I don't know, there was like so many things going on. Oh, he was, yeah, yeah. And I think I came to film serious. with him because he wanted me to come be in oh, the documentary. Oh, in that video, yeah, I remember. And it might have also been um, Ferg's in, with doing the music video itself because I think that was the first time and I brought some clothes down for Ferg's because he needed something. Yeah. And, you know, he hadn't even popped i mean they're right, all right. trying to pop and rocky was still coming up and yeah yeah such a beautiful time yeah lou um, lou or the whole family yeah yes. <laughs> of course yes tell me about the relationship with cl um well honestly there again another just like yeah. i feel like yeah when, when we speak about yeah that, that's why you're the people's designer really because you know there there's all these icons who kind of grow up and they're like, well, that, that is the communication. Yeah. That is it. Like, yeah. And they, they feel that immediately when they meet you even no matter what. And even before that, I remember like, cause there were so many people who, who wore, who wore your Adidas shoes and, and, you know, could have been from the hood or anything and, and were extremely homophobic, but like wearing wings. Yeah. And it's like, wow, like, there you go, like that's it. Like, so it was really crazy how 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 that tie in with Rocky like was a part of that, and yeah, because at at that time, literally for wearing like skinny jeans or anything, you were just like You're like labeled. clown so yeah. hard, and I completely understand when he rants about that, like what it was, because it, it I grew up around that same time, yeah. like there and saw it, and yeah, it was a part of it. I would wear like a like a scuba suit. <laughs> in the middle of the night walking home and they're just like what the fuck are you wearing yeah. <laughs> like um but yeah super iconic uh tell t tell me about the time with CL because that was another sure. one in your time with Korea yeah I was on a tour for Adidas going through Asia doing um press and events I think we did um Hong Kong um maybe it was Beijing Hong Kong Seoul and Tokyo and so by the time we th Seoul was the third uh, stop and I had asked for one thing and one thing only I wanted to see these girls the, mm. the, the 21, 21 girls because they had just had the first video when they were wearing archive pieces of mine and the Adidas pieces so they had archive pieces of my I remember my Tut TV collection maybe from 2004 or something I like that. I remember that. You did the tank, then yeah. you had the, the big hoodie jacket. <laughs> they had pieces from that. And it was like, I loved their, the styling of it. Wow. And so I said, could we do a photo shoot? I love these girls. They seem so cool. Yeah. And I just remember walking in the door and feeling such an energy and just and instantly she was family to me. See and, yeah. She's amazing. And so I just loved her. Yeah. And got along and then we became family and I just then from there was dressing them and then was like told Adidas we have to do a shoe with them so they were actually I think my first collaboration wow which is kind of amazing because I think my second one was Rocky yeah if, if the I, all black shoe yeah there was a, a, a Chinese star Edison Chen Edison Chen yeah who I did one He's with a demon. the shoe so there was like the few different people but um 
Mine was actually Eason Chen. Sorry, I made a mistake. Oh, Eason, not Edison Chen. Not Edison. Sorry. Good. I that's good that it wasn't Edison Chen. I know, no, it's Eason Chen. <laughs> yeah. Edison, yes, I know who. Yeah. I just, Eason Chen, sorry. Okay, okay, that's record. good. Eason Chen is who I did my shoe with. But I, I, I got them to do that first one with them. I was like, you don't know, these girls are amazing and they've got such a huge following. And I, they, they, they're the epitome of my look and they're yeah. like my friends and my muses and I love them and I love the music and the whole thing. And so um, I got Adidas to put them in the commercial and uh, kind of just kind of pushed and wow. her and I became great friends. And That's fire. You were the first like kind of king of collabs yeah. and just kind of honed it. And, and, and uh, the long champ relationship yeah. It's like super interesting to me because you made like these beautiful bags and yeah, just stylized them so good and tied them with your collection. Tell me about that. They had asked me to do a project um, for their suitcases. So I did this one called This Is Not Your Bag because I thought when you're at the airport and you right, see right. like, a, like coming down? the test bag that was like, make sure you pay attention to right. your, you know, the bag and get the right luggage. And I was <laughs> like, oh, I want to make a suitcase that looks like that. Yeah. So I did one that kind of looks like a container in a crate and then stamped all over it, this is not, this your, not bag. your bag. And I had so much fun with it. And then I discovered their pliage bag. And I was like, oh, I love the shape so much. Yeah. And it's so simple, but it's so good and right, so sturdy. And wide. It's like an open canvas. And it's so good. And I was like, Please let me do one for my show with one of my prints. Right, right. And so we did one, and they were like, oh my God, this is great. And they're like, this is so much fun. And I was like, we got so much press, they're like, people want to buy it. And we were just doing it as a gift, the first one. And I was like, I was like, I'd be happy to continue this because yeah. I love it. And so then from then on, I did one every season um, with the collection inspiration. So it was given as a gift at the show and then later sold by Longchamp at the wow. boutique. Um, we did that for a little over, it was, we did a 10 year anniversary, so I don't remember 15 years, because it's, it's ended now. The last one was, um, was it with my, tw that was a season ago, so yeah. That's fire. Yeah. How'd you meet um, Kelly Catron? Kelly was. <laughs> that was uh, <laughs> my wife showed me Kel on Earth, uh -huh. and I saw um, your episode on it, and it was so cool. I don't even remember my episode. Uh -oh. What happened in my episode? Tell me. <laughs> was, um, it for, was it around the fashion show? Yeah, it was around the show. I think, uh, hold on, hold on. I got to think about this. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have no recollection Dang. anymore. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. it was just madness chaos, yes, I think. Kelly was chaos. It was, I think it was in London. Yeah, it was in London. Oh, so was it the Flintstones show? Yeah, it was the Flintstones show, oh, yeah. Oh my god, okay. Yeah. That's one of my favorite shows. Yeah, and then, uh, and, yeah, so. The hair on that show, Out that of This was World. Um, Kelly, I had moved here, and Kelly I had, I don't been introduced to me by someone at a party, and I was gonna show, re-show my show here. Oh, okay. In LA, because I was showing in New York, but living here, and I was wait, like, wait, what? So you had to reshow your show here? I did a reshow. I, I, I showed a show of mine from New York here in LA at Mocha. What made you reshow it? Um, I just thought I live here, and I thought this was such a yeah, vibrant, it's where cool it community. Was so more organic. And I was like, why don't I bring the show here and show it to like? My community, Your friends, yeah, yeah, and so that's awesome. Mocha was willing to give me the space, and being that it's like one of what was, it's such an amazing museum, and the space was great. I thought, okay, cool. So I, um, I was like, I need someone to like deal with the the show production and PR of it. So I went and met her, and she was pregnant at that time with her baby Ava, wow. and she was like. Um, yeah, I'd love to do this. So wow. we did the show together. Then she was like, you know, I'd like to be your publicist. And she's like the OG. And I was like, sure. And so yeah. then we became kind of a Bonnie and Clyde yeah. situation. <laughs> um, and she definitely super believed in me when a lot of times there was people that were like wow. trying to write me off. And she was a bulldog and yeah, barked 100%. at people and bit them and snarled at them. And I forever and uh, and forever until I have no breath in me, love yeah. and admire Kelly. She's no longer my publicist. She's right. doing all these other things. And obviously I've just switched around so many things. And, yeah. and now everything's consolidated with Moschino. Yeah. But I, I have nothing but love. For and love for her. Yeah, because she, she's also been 
someone that was genuinely herself. And I remember people telling me like, oh, don't, you know, oh, she's a husband, don't do that. Yeah. I thought, you know what? I've had people count me out so exactly. many times. Exactly. I'm not gonna, you know, she's tenacious. She was genuine. She Fuck was honest. Fuck them, go after God. And I and her and I had a very long uh, partnership for yeah. many years and did That's a lot fire. of fun things and a lot of adventures. Damn. Uh, I'm running through all the collabs. <laughs> I never get to hear about them. Yeah, I was just gonna talk about that. Um, tell me, tell me about the Swatch collab. Yeah. Because there, that there's another <laughs> company who you kind of like gave this to and and it was so amazing and incredible and a lot of people don't know about swatches history sure. but they have such a crazy catalog of amazing watches yeah and working with amazing artists yeah with Keith Haring yeah and for on. years yeah um yeah tell me about that collaboration well, Swatch was one of those things that I loved so much as a kid. Yeah. When they came out and I was a kid, they were like such an iconic thing that we all wanted as kids. And I loved them so much. And I had a couple of Swatches. I remember getting one for my birthday. Yeah. And so when they had asked me about it, it was just, to me, total nostalgia from my childhood. So they approached you about it? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. And so I was like... Uh, That's so cool. I was like... Uh, totally want to do this I'm totally yeah. down and they um, were up for I was like I just want to kind of do my thing which is try to like how do I put my imprint on your, your icon yeah and they were really receptive to like me creating the wings and changing the shapes and adding right. things to make them more than just what they normally had been yeah um, and we did Times Square Billboard. I don't know if you ever saw that. I don't think I did. To show you a picture, there was the, the Swatch Times Square Billboard of the ad with me in it. Wow. Um, and I think I did two two seasons, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it was two drops. Something like that. I'm so yeah. looking for the, the heart one. Yeah. That's, yeah, that one's insane. Um, dang. Um, Cybex Club. Yep. Tell me about it. Actually, it was through a friend of. A, of I actually mine. bought the stroller for my for my I newborn. Heard. Yeah. <laughs> I heard. And you've got the you've got the food fight one too. Yeah, yeah. You got the original. <laughs> yeah, they were friends with someone at the PR of uh, Adidas, and so they connected through there, and they said, um, you know, we'd love to know if you want to do a stroller. And I was like, I've never thought about it, right. but why not? Because my whole philosophy has always been why not be able to bring design to people yeah. in ways that maybe they wouldn't normally have it? Yeah. Why should a cool mom mm -hmm. have to sacrifice her coolness for this accessory when she has a baby? Because yeah. cool young parents <laughs> deserve to have cool things for their child. Right. And a stroller is so kind of clinical. Yeah, clinical, mundane. Yeah. It's like, oh, so I thought, yeah. okay, I'd love to do this because this way I can be, again, my whole thing philosophy about what I do is to be part of people's lives. Yeah. If I can design something that is part of your life and your memory that you've worn it or you've that stroller, think about it, your baby will have baby pictures in that stroller. Yeah. And someday, you know, your baby's, you know, love will be like, oh let me see your baby pictures and whoa, what's that stroller? Yeah. Like, that was a Jeremy Scott stroller. Yeah. Like, wow, that's cool. <laughs> and so then I'm in the fabric of their life. And to me that's the ultimate um, privilege I get wow. in what I do and so I want to be part of people's lives in that way and yeah. telling their stories of their lives and when they're telling it and being even if it's just that little morsel it's emotional it's it's very emotional it's yeah. even like this ruler tracksuit is like yeah. insane <laughs> to that time and you like immediately remember like what kind of people were wearing it how it was looked and yeah like that time from 2012 to 2014 where people were just like throwing like 30 patterns on their bodies <laughs> <laughs> and just looking nuts but like fabulous and like amazing and yeah it definitely does its job of like having that that feeling that nostalgia that like emotionalness to it it's something something i love about it thank you and why i'm so tied to it um yeah even like yeah the so crazy like the like the linda farrells and and how crazy those were and how iconic the, the Lady Gaga ones were. Yeah. They're known as the Lady Gaga ones. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's really crazy, your story. And even the, the, the Moon Man. Yeah. I mean, could I, yeah. I'm gonna grab this real quick. This is the craziest piece, probably. 
Yeah, tell me about this. So the, um, <laughs> I think the first VMAs I went to here in LA, um, I wore a yellow tuxedo that I had designed for Moschino with uh, then a black eyes and um, like the smiley face on the back of the tuxedo. Yeah. And um, the producers of the show um, loved that I brought it to the like, you know, to the red carpet and really like, you know, gave a look. And right. so they said, um, you know, we've been thinking about the next season and we would love for you to redo the Moon Man and read and take over the, the red carpet and create it, design it and, mm -hmm. and actually then they ended up asking me to host on the red carpet and do this whole thing. And um, it was I mean, to call something a dream come true means you had to have dreamt it. Yeah. I could have never you dreamt it. You could have never dreamt this. This was something it. beyond, wow. this is the things that, like, you know, fashion so, designers don't get asked to do this. Yeah, no, you have the wings. So, yeah, he's wearing the way. wings, he's wearing the peace sign <sighs> ch change, and he has the, the color bar TV. Yeah. And then I did him as a color bar. So iconic. And so, um, yeah, no, I, I when, when they actually called me and told me what they were asking me to do, I just remember I just started crying because yeah. it was like my childhood was growing up watching MTV in a place that was so remote and again before internet where yeah. you didn't see other people's lives so yeah. these were small windows I had to I thought was pop well what which is pop culture but which to fashion and the things that connected, not anymore but. yeah connected to me you know yeah. and I was like I was so excited and watching the VMAs all the time yeah. and that excitement because it was like my Oscars in a way because I loved music so much and yeah. musicians and the personalities because so musicians cool. have such strong, bold personalities, personalities and I've always resonated with that and that's why I think they resonate so well with my clothes. Yeah. And so it was such a, an amazing, beautiful, awesome thing and it was doubly wonderful that Miley got to host it, yeah. being one of my great friends, and that Kanye got the Vanguard. Yeah. So he has the only one of a kind um, gold version of this, wow. and that he, um, and he, of course, being like Kanye, like while he was giving the speeches, like, Jeremy, look, I'm like, I, 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 I have it, thank you. And I'm, like, sitting there in the audience, like, you're welcome, like, you're in the middle of your speech, but that he appreciates it and understands how rare. How rare it, it is, is and how special it is. Yeah. I, I'm gonna try to steal Diplos on Monday, <laughs> hopefully, because he's also just a busy, spastic person. He yes. probably won't, won't notice if he's looking the exactly. other way. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so cool. And I think only two artists, two artists did one. It was yeah. you and then it was Cause. Correct. And then that was it. Yeah. They gave it the boot. So there was something that really blew me away. Um, I had this brand, Spaghetti Boys, which recently just put on hiatus. But we had this, uh, this website where it was a character and you kind of like dress him up and it was like 3D. And you know, when I was doing research on you, I found this web, like your website for your Shrek collaboration, yeah, which was like so cool. Years before <laughs> you did it where Shrek is like holding it and it was yeah. late, it's laid out the same way. I'll show you after, but it's like the clothes on the bottom and like, yeah, you were just so ahead of time, like always like, and I feel like that's like, yeah, from day one, you're just always ahead of time, like just way ahead. Um, how that, tell me about the Shrek collaboration and also that website, because it's fucking insane. Thank you. And another thing that just kind of went over its people's heads, because <laughs> you like do so many amazing things. But yeah, incredible. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'd been reached out from um, DreamWorks that they were interested in doing collaboration and uh, had me come in and I, kind of saw the whole archive of everything and then thought about what I would want to do. And like their archives of like just their art and stuff? Of all the Shrek stuff, yeah. I came wow. with all the Shrek stuff. And they had like archive Shrek pieces? Mm -hmm. Like all the artwork, all the animation, oh, okay, all okay, of okay. that stuff. So then I was trying to think, well, what would I want to do and how would I tell Shrek's story right. um, and make it personal to me at the same time? Right. So that's where that came from. And you, you kind of, uh, you did the pixelated track as well now. I did, you're right. Yeah. I love a little pixelation. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a classic and it also has that meaning of, of yeah, being the glitch, very yeah. record ralph -ish. Yeah. And feeling like that all the time. Yeah. And that's why that, that, mo that movie's so amazing. I think I showed Wreck-It Ralph after 
uh, after I showed your doc Aww. documentary at my film festival. Yeah. And now that I think about it, it's like perfect. Yeah, for real. Yeah, super insane. Damn, dream collabs. Yes. Uh, which ones have you not gotten yet that you want to get? Oh, I can't tell you those. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's I true. I can't, I can't spoil the Christmas yeah. surprises that are that that's are in the fact. future for me to achieve. That's true. That's true. Damn. Is there anyone that you want to work with as a human being? I mean, of course. That you haven't got to yet? Of people I've never dressed that I love, that I would love to dress is Dolly Parton. Dang. I love Dolly. I've gotten to meet her a few times. She's, we've discussed it. That's fire. But we haven't had the right thing to do yet together. Yeah. But she's one of my favorites because I think she's all that's holy and good in this world. And when she like sings or when you talk to her, or hear her philosophy, and yeah. just, she's just all good. It's like God's light emitting from her. Wow. Um, so she's someone I love. And I um, can't wait for all the new people that are brewing and gonna burst on the scene that are gonna inspire me and yeah. inspire us all and make cool music and sure. there'll be new people to dress and you know. That's very true. Damn. Thank you so much for having me in your home. My pleasure. This has been so amazing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably just gonna have to hide out for a couple of days after this. <laughs> 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 Just speechless. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate you. I love everything Aww. you do. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Cha cha. <laughs> <laughs>